As I've been studying scripture lately, I've been taking a look at the way that the Lord tells a story um, about a person or a people using their name. Um, It's really interesting. Um, From the beginning of scripture, you know, we have Adam and Eve. Uh, The name Adam means uh, earth or red clay because he was made out of the earth. Uh, It also means mankind because he was the first of many. But the name Eve means life or giver of life. And we're told that he named her that because she was going to be the mother of all the living. But the use of names to tell a story of a person or to um, denote the um, outstanding characteristic of a person um, doesn't begin and end with Adam and Eve. We go on to see people like uh, Abram, who became Abraham, because he would be a father of many. We see Jacob become Israel um, because he wrestled with God. So there's a clear pattern of individual names being used to tell individual stories. But I also want to show how if we take a look at the descendants from Adam to Noah, we can see a clear um, story being told about the fall of the first Adam and God's eternal plan to redeem mankind through the second Adam. It's really um, incredible when you look at it. Let's read Genesis chapter 5, verse 1. Adam's descendants to Noah. This is the book of the generations of Adam. When God created man, he created him in the likeness of God. Male and female, he created them, and he blessed them, and he named them man when they were created. When Adam had lived 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeness, after his image, and named him Seth. The days of Adam after he fathered Seth were 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. When Seth had lived 105 years, he fathered Enosh. Seth lived after he fathered Enosh 807 years, and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. When Enosh had lived 90 years, he fathered Kenan. Enosh lived after he fathered Kenan, 815 years, and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Enosh were 905 years, and he died. When Kenan had lived 70 years, he fathered Mahalalel. Kenan lived after he fathered Mahalalel 840 years, and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Kenan were 910 years, and he died. When Mahalalel had lived 65 years, he fathered Jared. Mahalalel lived after he fathered Jared 830 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years, and he died. When Jared had lived 162 years, he fathered Enoch. And Jared lived after he fathered Enoch 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he fathered Methuselah. Enoch walked with God after he fathered Methuselah 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. When Methuselah had lived 187 years, he fathered Lamech. Methuselah lived after he fathered Lamech 782 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. When Lamech had lived 182 years, he fathered a son and called his name Noah, saying, Out of the ground that the Lord has cursed, this one, shall bring us relief from our work and from the painful toil of our hands. Lamech lived after he fathered Noah 595 years 
and had sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Lamech were seven hundred and seventy-seven years, and he died. After Noah was five hundred years old, Noah fathered Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So if we take a closer look at the book of generations, or the book of the generations of Adam, specifically the names given, we can clearly see the fingerprints of the Holy Spirit. It's really incredible. Uh, the name Adam means man. The name Seth means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Kenan means sorrow. Mahalalel means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means his death shall bring. Lamech means despairing. Uh, and Noah means comfort and rest. I mean, that's our story. That's the human story. The fall of man, the blessed God coming down, and bringing rest to those of us who were despairing. It's really incredible, and it got me thinking about where else in Scripture God might have done something like this. And so I actually went back to chapter 4, and I took a look at Canaan because I thought, uh, I took a look at Cain because I, I thought perhaps um, that story the story of Cain, uh, who was also the son of Adam, might have um, told a story of that line. And it's kind of interesting. The first couple of names I looked up, um, Adam means man, of course. Cain means acquired. Enoch means teaching, which we just covered in chapter 5. But I read, um, who's the son of Enoch, um, on the other side, um, means dragon. And... Mahu Jael uh, means smitten by God. Uh, so you have with just the few first names of chapter 4 in the, in the line of Adam, but going through Cain instead of Seth, you have man acquired teaching. Um, and if you want to insert the word from, I suppose you could. Man acquired teaching from the dragon, smitten by God. Um, and if that's not Cain's story and his line story, um. I don't know what it is. But anyway, I just wanted to offer that up, that there is a definite pattern there. And um, so it got me thinking about uh, the Hebrews and whether or not um, God was keeping track of the Hebrews as well. And those who um, came to this country as slaves, um, because it says in Romans chapter 11 that God has not cast off his people and that they would be blind for a time, but there would come a time where their eyes would be open. And since uh, the Hebrews are, you know, the apple of his eye, the fig tree that we're supposed to be watching in the end times, it got me to thinking whether or not he would, um, in a sense, by using our names, like he has in the scriptures, uh, keep track of a people. And so I took a look at the surnames for so-called African Americans, the Hebrews, and an interesting sort of story emerged, which is the topic of this video today, and I want to share it. Um, so if you'll be patient, I know that uh, we are about nine minutes in and I've yet to get to it, but I, I needed to build a foundation for what I was going to share um, before I did that. And um, so now I'm going to do that. I'm going to take you through the most common surnames amongst so-called African-Americans, the Hebrews of the Bible, and you will see our story told, I think. Um, hear me out and uh, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Okay, so first we need to understand that the number 10 in the Bible is the number of perfection, uh, the number of completion or completeness of order. Uh, the most recent example we had of that was the 
generations of Adam. There were 10 of those um, that told the complete story of man. Of course, we have our 10 commandments. And um, a more ominous example would be the 10 plagues sent on Egypt. So the number 10 in the Bible is very important in terms of completion or um, establishing the completeness of order. And so using that um, as a guide, I started to take a look at uh, the surnames for Hebrews in the Americas, specifically North America. I took a look at the surnames, and I took a look at the first 10. Um, what you'll see in front of you is the uh, something that I found on the internet, which lists the most popular names for so-called African Americans in the United States, first of which is Williams, and then Johnson, Smith, Jones, Brown, Jackson, Davis, Thomas, Harris, and Robinson. And then I went and I took a look at the meanings of each one of those names. And that's when I was really surprised. I couldn't believe what I was looking at or what I was reading. It was actually <laughs> kind of a shock to me. Um, and that's what I want to share with you guys. I know that there will be a lot of naysayers about this. and oh, there are different ways to interpret names. And this and that is a stretch. But I really do think that there's something here. Um, I think that um, when Scripture says that God is the same to uh, today, yesterday, and forevermore, that that's true, um, that his MO is the same. Um, doesn't have to be, of course. He's God, he can do what he wants. But I do think that we can learn something from the patterns that we see in Scripture. So anyway, I was just very curious about this, and um, I'm going to share with you the meanings of each one of the first ten of these names, and you decide for yourself. Do your own research. Um, and prayerfully come to your own conclusions. This is just what I feel a great deal of conviction about. This is what I found, and I thought it worth sharing um, as I've been doing my own personal study um, about the Hebrew people and kind of trying to um, study in a way that is affirming to me as not just based on what I heard someone else say. Um, it's been a huge blessing to me, and um, this is simply an encouragement for others to do the same. You know, be diligent and studious and study to show yourself approved. That scripture, of course, what I'm going to share with you is just um, a theory based on what I know about scripture. I'm not saying that this is scripture. Mm -hmm very careful about that, but I am saying that I think I've stumbled onto something that's, um, at the very least, pretty interesting. Okay, so here we go. So let's just start at the top of the list of the most common last names of the Hebrews, so-called African Americans. Williams is a baptismal name, meaning the son of William, uh, from the root word meaning resolute protector, so the entire meaning is son of the resolute protector. And the second name is Johnson. Uh, Johnson uh, actually means Yahweh has favored. Yahweh has favored. The third name on the list is Smith. Um, it means to smite. It's where we get our word blacksmith. It means to smite with a hammer um, or smitten. Fourth on the list is Jones. Jones, um, it's a pretty common name, um, keeping up with the Joneses, for example. Um, Jones means Yahweh is gracious. Yahweh is gracious. Uh, the fifth name on the list, uh, the fifth most common last names of the Hebrews, is Brown. Um, Brown often refers to, um, obviously, the color of something, but the color of hair, for example or the uh, color of a person's complexion, brown. 
Um, next on the list, number six, would be Jackson. Jackson means God has favored. Yep. God has favored. Uh, number seven on the list would be Davis. Davis is um, actually a derivative of David, King David, and it means um, beloved. Uh, beloved. Number seven is pretty interesting. It is the last name Thomas. Thomas, and you may recall um, in the New Testament, uh, Thomas was a twin. Thomas had a brother. Um, so the name Thomas actually means twin. So let's take a look at um, some twins in the Bible. And we're going to take a look at, obviously, Jacob and Esau. Uh, they were twins, and we'll take a look at what Scripture has to say um, about the two. Genesis 25, 19 through 25, I think I will read. Um, and this is the King James Version. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister to Laban the Syrian. And I'll just do a quick note here that the Syrian or Syria is not the modern day Syria that we know. Um, this was Aram or Aramans, the Aramans, and they were a Semitic people. They were actually related to the Hebrews. So uh, Laban the Syrian, uh, verse 21, and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and the two manner and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. So we see there that uh, the Lord has spoken of of twins, Esau and Jacob, and uh, that ties into the name that we just spoke about, which is the last surname um, that we spoke about, which is the name Thomas, and it means twin. So I think this is a very um, interesting, exciting, compelling uh, tie-in to my theory, um, that the word twin was actually used um, in the um, chain of surnames and in that particular order. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna move on um, and take a look at the remaining names and you'll see how those also tie in. And again, this is my theory. I think it's a pretty good one and I um, actually believe it. but um, you are welcome to comment below um, your thoughts and uh, let's just move on to the next one. And that would be number nine, which is Harris, the last name Harris, the ninth most common name, last name among the Hebrews, so-called African Americans. And it means ruler of the property, ruler of the property. I think you see where I'm going with this. So speaking of ruler of the property, um, that's our cue to take a look at what scripture has to say about the property and who he gave it to. Um, Genesis chapter 17. Um, this is God talking to Abraham. He's making him some promises. And we'll just scroll down to verse 8. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. So that's the property that we're talking about. All the land of Canaan. So we see now that the property was the land of Canaan that 
the Lord promised to Abraham and his seed after him. Um, but, uh, as you know, Esau and Jacob were both the seed of Abraham. So why was it that Jacob um, received the inheritance and Esau did not? Well, the scripture tells us. I'll start here. Um, it says that, And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom, which means red. Um, so Esau has come in out of the fields. He's very hungry. He sees that Jacob has prepared some food. And so he asks him for some food. And so Jacob, valuing the birthright that his brother got by birth, said to Esau, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he sware unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. He despised what God um, had promised Abraham. Um, and if you take a look in Malachi chapter 1, I won't go there now, but um, it does talk about how the Lord loved Jacob, but he hated Esau, and he laid waste to all of Esau's um, land and property and such that he had outside of the birthright that was supposed to come to him through Abraham. Um, and then it says again in Romans, I think it's chapter 9, verse 13, um, it's quoting from Malachi, um, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. And again, we must remember that we're talking about two twins here. Uh, two twins that were struggling against each other in the womb, and only one of them would end up with the birthright, with the promise of the property. So with that, I'm going to move on to the next name and bring all of this together, hopefully in a way that makes sense and supports my argument. Okay, so the tenth and final name uh, in the series of ten, and remember we said that the number ten was the number of completion. Uh, the tenth and final most common name among the Hebrews, so-called African Americans, is Robinson. Robinson. And it means son of bright fame. Son of of bright fame. So now we have the top 10. We have the most common. Um, I'm going to go over those again just briefly. Williams, Johnson, Smith, Jones, Brown, Jackson, Davis, Thomas, Harris, and Robinson. When we put all those names together, let's see what it says. Son of the resolute protector, Yahweh has favored. Smitten, Yahweh is gracious. Brown complexion, God has favored. Beloved twin, ruler of the property, son of bright fame. So I think, when I look at that, at least, what I see is the story of the Hebrews from beginning, where we started, and where we're ending up. We started as the sons of God, sons of the res res resolute protector. Um, we were smitten because of our disobedience. Um, but God favored us. Um, pointing out who we are by pointing out the complexion of our skin. Um, and that we were um, of the tribe, um, of the line of Jacob, I should say. And um, the beloved twin, Remember, scripture had said that um, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. So the beloved twin um, with the brown complexion, not the red complexion. Um, ruler of the property um, that he inherited. Um, and um, we end up being, as a seed, sons or son of the bright fame. Son of bright fame. So... Um, that's 
my case. That's my theory. There's um, probably a little bit more I could add to this, but um, this is where I'm going to leave it for now. Um, you can take a look at these last names yourself and do your own research. Um, I'd also like to look at the last names of Edom, to be honest. <laughs> I wonder what that says. But that's um, research for another time. Um, but again, the most common last names of the Hebrews, so-called African Americans. Um, son of the Resolute Protector, Yahweh has favored. Smitten, Yahweh is gracious. Brown complexion, God has favored. Beloved twin, ruler of the property, son of bright fame. <laughs>